Hi, I'm MC the Movie Critic. I know it, and you know it. Today's film we're going to talk about is sad. And when I mean sad, I mean it's sad because it has great potential. Like, it could have been a good movie, but it turned out to be a very mediocre film. And that film is The New Adventures of Pippi Longstocking. Freedom calls and Pippi runs the girl who never Talk about a film that is bland like peanut butter. This movie has lame writing, forced acting, is very cliche, is very corny, and it's annoying. Really, really annoying. Now before we take a look at this 80s fashion vomit, let's take a look at a little history. Pippi Longstocking is actually based on a series of books written by Astrid Lindgren. It's about a girl who has incredible strength and has a pet monkey and a horse. She befriends with two kids named Tommy and Annika and they go on crazy adventures. Ever since its popularity over the years, there has been tons of versions of the classic story. Even Hayao Miyazaki was supposed to make an animated film of Pippi Longstocking, but Lindgren denied it and the animated film was cancelled. So years later, Columbia Pictures steps in and decides to make a film of Pippi Longstocking, and thus the new adventures of Pippi Longstocking is born. And they fucked up this movie so hard, this movie was a box office failure when it came out. Why you may ask? Well, let's find out. First off, why the movie is called The New Adventures of Pippi Longstocking anyway? Is this movie meant to be a pilot of a TV show they're going to do? Why can't you call it simply Pippi Longstocking? I mean, that would have made more sense. Anyways, we see a boat is sailing the ocean as we're introduced to our main character, Pippi Longstocking, played by Tammy Aaron. She spends most of her time sailing the seven seas with her father, Captain Longstocking, and his buccaneers. And of course, they sing. And that's the whole song, folks. Three minutes in, they sing a song that serves no purpose to the plot. That was pointless. Thank you, Slappy Squirrel. We see Pippi is playing with her father, and he takes her to free dog to educate her. All right, Pippi. History. Take notes. Okay, Mr. Nielsen. If I have to learn this rotten old history stuff, so do you. It's a fucking monkey. Why does it need to take a history lesson? But the history lesson will have to wait, as a volcano starts erupting, and sure enough, we have ourselves a storm. Unfortunately, Captain Longstocking is blown overboard as well as Pippi, which doesn't look like she's being blown overboard. Looks like someone spray a water hose at her, and then she jumps. Make water villa, villa cooler! And that's it for that scene. Okay, um, we cut to the next day as we see two kids, Tommy and Annika, wandering about the abandoned house called Villa Villa Kula. Thus, we're introduced to our main villain, Mr. Blackheart, which I think he is the villain. We'll pull it down and the whole plot will develop. You can't do that. We plan that tree over there sometime. Oh, not anymore, you don't. Uh, come on, take pictures of it. A lot of pictures. Knock it down, we pour cement as far as you can see. Oh hey, it's the half-assed three stooges. Stupid, lame, and dumb. Later that night, we see the two kids are still curious about the house, and they decide to go in and check it out. What was that? Step creaked. Don't follow so close. So they fell down the stairs when they come across Pippi. She introduces herself to them and she tells them what happened. My father's a sea captain who was washed overboard in a storm. Did he drown? Of course not. He lives on the Curry Curry Island. He's the king of the cannibals. Cannibals? Real cannibals? There's no such thing today. Yeah, my poorly written dialogue says so. 
Which reminds me, I'm hungry. You guys hungry? We're always hungry. Great. Really, movie? You just cut to Pippi already downstairs instead of going downstairs? We see the kids are throwing pancakes at each other until the father comes in and can't believe what he sees. I have never seen such a mess in my entire life! My God, this place is a pigsty! are going to march right home this very instant and go to bed. And as for you, I don't know who you think you are or what you think you're doing here. But I'm going to get to the bottom of this first thing in the morning. This is definitely most unorthodox. The next day, Tommy and Annika goes to the house to see Pippi as she's washing her horse while she's in the tub. Why she's in the tub and washing the horse in the house? I don't know. I got no words to say about this. The only thing I can say is this. Oh, brother! So Pippi takes a bath with her clothes on, don't ask. She spins herself to dry as we have ourselves another bland musical number. I put my scrub and shoes on and I never get the blues on Monday morning. Oh yeah! It's just to be a goner as I hit it corner with that warning. My god, this song is bland. Since when this is a musical? In fact, I don't think it's a good song and it doesn't work. What do I mean? Well, how about the fact that Pippi is singing at the exact same time as the background singer is singing? The whole movie is like that. Whenever Pippi is doing something whimsical, an underwritten bland song pops in and Pippi sings at the same time as the background singer sings. You can't have a character and a background singer sing at the exact same time. It doesn't work. If you're going to have a song playing in the background, that's fine. But let the singers sing the song. Let us enjoy what the caters are doing while the song is playing. Or better yet, let the characters sing while the song plays in the background. It's so embarrassing! Mm. Meanwhile, we see the three dumbasses arrives as Mr. Blackheart offers Pippi to sell the house. I wonder if you'd be interested in selling this house. My home? Selling? <laughs> Oh, you know those sound effects when Pippi's doing flips or something whimsical? Get used to that, people. It's all throughout the movie. I mean, seriously, she's just doing flips. That doesn't make it magical or whimsical. It's almost like... Wasn't that pointless? I'm afraid you'll have to go now. It's Friday. Wash day. Whoa! I'm sure you'll understand. Keep the change, you filthy animal. Anyways, we see Pippi's riding her horse with Tommy and Annika while singing the damn theme song as she sees a group of orphans. As they arrive in town, Pippi sees them again and decides to meet them. She tells Tommy and Annika to get some ice cream for the orphans, thus they march around throwing ice cream at the orphans and they have a little food fight. This results in Pippi, Tommy, and Annika to make their getaway. And then we have this scene. Get down here right this minute! No, no, no! Stay up! Stay up! Hi, Dad! See you again! You pay for this! I know it's a kid's film. It's innocent. But let me just say this. What the hell just happened? I mean, I know she's flying in the air, but how the hell is she flying in the air? I know she has super strength, but they didn't say she has the ability to fly. What is this, E.T.? Rip off is a fucking rip off. After that E.T. knockoff, we see Pippi and the kids are playing in the house as Tommy and Annika's mom comes magically out of nowhere and tells them it's dinner time. The next day, we see a woman named Miss Bannister comes to Villa Villa Kula and convinces Pippi to go to the children's home. No child can live alone. No, no, no. It's unheard of. Every child needs adult supervision and has to go to school. <laughs> school? Why? To learn things, of course. What kinds of things? These things. If you choose the right one, you win a trip to Disneyland! <laughs> Friedolf taught me how to count. Enough to count my gold. And as for the other stuff, I've gotten along fine without it for ten years. So, 
I'm afraid you'll have to find children for your children's home someplace else. <laughs> Most unorthodox. If you would just take a hold of that beast, I want to see what's going on inside. Sure. But if I were you, I'd wait and come back on Friday, because today's Splunk Day, and they're all over the place. So, as you can see, Pippi Longstocking is pretty dull. She has no personality whatsoever, outside of being happy and getting into trouble. And it doesn't help the fact that her voice is almost completely monotone. And that's one of the biggest problems with this character. The only personality she has is being happy. It wouldn't be so bad if they made her interesting and give her character. I understand in the book, as well as the animated film that came out years later, she's always happy and cheerful. But they give her more personality outside of being happy. She can feel sad, lonely, guilty, scared, and even angry, while at the same time being cheerful and optimistic. It's kind of like Goku from Dragon Ball. He's nice, he's cheerful, but they give him more than just one emotion. He can feel confused, curious, and angry. He's also an expert martial artist. Even when he loses, he still wants to train harder until he wins, which makes the character a lot more interesting and keeps us rooting for the character. But Pippi, however, she is so bland and since her voice is almost completely monotone, you don't care what's going to happen to her. She's just there to look cute, silly, and happy. That's it, with absolutely no personality. This is such a crock of shit. Speaking of which, we see Mr. Blackheart and the two Nimrods plotting a scheme to give it a Pippi. While that's going on, we see Pippi is having a picnic with Tommy and Annika. Thus, we see the two Stooges enters the house and Pippi caught them. This results in a ridiculous chase scene and with some lame ass slapstick. You little monster, you! Let's play find the hat! Come here, you Annika! Okay, I'll admit, that's pretty funny. Can I see it again? Ah! And again? Ah! Oh, I can do this all day. Ah! 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 So, after three minutes of this lame ass slapstick, and trust me, it feels like 10 minutes, we see Pippi is at the airfield when she come across a pilot named Jenkins. See, you need these to keep you up, and the prop to take you forward. But it's really a lot more complicated than that. I know because I'm a pilot. Do you see this plane next to me? Later that night, we see Pippi is having dinner with her friends as the mother brought a cake to the table. This results in Pippi putting her face on the cake and realizes that she's a bit of a jackass. That wasn't funny, Pippi. Your table manners are atrocious. Just hate like the producers of this movie. If I promise to practice one hour each day, Will you teach me all that table manners and stuff? I'll try. If you do that again, I'll slap you. The next day, Tommy and Annika's father is with Mr. Blackheart and Miss Bannister discussing what to do with Pippi. That's a fire engine. Now, why do we need that? Because the brat climbs up on roofs and in trees. And I've seen her up there. Now, she is more slippery than that filthy monkey that she lives with, not to mention that stinking horse of hers. Her horse is most unorthodox. Why the police? Oh, she's very strong. You should see what she did. She threw my men right up on a tree. Then she lifted me like I was a baby. Uh, some baby, I'll tell you. It's like she has super strength or something. So Tommy and Annika got out from school and tells Pippi that they're running away. And how they're gonna run away? Oh, you'll see in a few moments. So Miss Bannister arrives until... Oh god, I spoke too soon. First off, how the fuck can they fly a plane with boards of wood? There's no way they can fly like that. Even the Wright brothers will say bullshit on that. And to top it off, we have another underwritten bland song, and of course, Pippi sings it with the background singer. Yeah, let's skip this song. 
Anyways, we see the kids are camping out and eating, and she takes out a gun. With this old gun, I'll be able to defend us, even if we should be attacked by a splunk. <laughs> yeah, Pippi's a bit of a psycho, isn't she? Let's hope she doesn't use a knife like this guy. The next day, we see Pippi's making breakfast as Tommy and Annika wants to go home, but they're lost. Pippi goes for a swim in the river as well as Tommy and Annika. This leads to a cow who came bizarrely out of nowhere and eats up Tommy and Annika's clothes. No! Our clothes! They're gone! Somebody's taken them! They have to be here somewhere. The dinosaur, I guess. They exchange for the eggs. Um, how can a dinosaur eat a pair of clothes if they're extinct for millions of years? So they continue on their adventure while singing the same bland song as they come across a group of barrels. This leads to the kids floating inside the barrel on the river. Which begs the question, why can't they cross the bridge that is right in front of them? There's no reason for them to be floating on the river with barrels if there's a fucking bridge in front of them. They come across a waterfall, but luckily Jenkins comes in just in time and saves them as the family takes Pippi home. You know, when I grow up, maybe I'm not going to be a pirate. I'm seriously thinking of changing it to a pilot. Pippi, I don't think you understand. You really went too far this time. What you did was most unorthodox. As they drop Pippi off, Miss Bannister is at Villa Villa Kula. They go inside as Miss Bannister convinces her again to go to the children's home. This leads to the next day as Pippi is taking class and the teacher asks her a math question. How much is 12 and 15? Well, if you don't know something as simple as that, you shouldn't be teaching. I won't stand for rudeness in this class. Then please sit down. I'm warning you, young lady. We have ways of dealing with rude, unruly children. Don't maybe go trash ball on your ass. Unfortunately, Pippi gets in trouble as we cut to the next scene. Pippi tells the kids her experiences around the world. There's a long pipe that goes from the caramel factory right into the classroom, and it shoots candies out of it all day long. What does the teacher do? Takes the paper off the caramels for the kids, of course. You don't think they do it themselves. <laughs> Nothing but a great big lie, like Miss Measuresmith says. And who said you could braid your hair again? Why are you so bossy all the time? Don't you ever do anything you really want to do? Yeah, no. The next day, we see Pippi's drawing on the floor, and of course, she gets in trouble again. This leads to Pippi at the room as she goes to the window to talk to her mom. Spiritually, to be exact. Why do they ask so many questions when they already know the answers? I mean, a horse is a horse. I'm so confused. If only Papa were here, then we know the right thing to do. Oh, don't get all sentimental, movie. This is not a Don Bluth film. It's fucking Pippi Longstocking. Get a message to him? But how? In a bottle? Oh, thanks, Mom. My problem's solved. I can't care and I get the fuck out of here. That night, Pippi decides to leave the orphanage. She goes downstairs but is blocked by card players. So Pippi goes upstairs to the attic until she comes across an inventor named Gregory. How did you get up here? You certainly didn't come through the front door. I climbed up. On a ladder? No, up the wall. Oh, like Spider-Man? How did you do it? Show you. Give me your shoe. What is that stuff? This is a very special glue. Wait, if that's a special glue, then how come there's no glue coming out from the can? I mean, how lazy can you possibly be? The glue in Who Framed Roger Rabbit is more stickier than that. I mean, look what happened to Judge Doom. <laughs> You see? He puts her against the wall and... THESE ARE THE LAMEST SONGS EVER! Do you really need to have a song where Pippi's doing something whimsical? It's just Pippi walking on walls and walking on the ceiling. It's awesome, but the music doesn't fit the scene. But I'll give the scene some credit. At least Pippi's not singing along with the background singer. <laughs> 
Pippi asks Gregory to write an SOS to her father. This results in Pippi walking down the window as she arrives at the beach and throws the message in the bottle in the ocean. Which leads to the orphanage being on fire, everyone is evacuating, Pippi came back just in time as Gregory and the two kids are ready to jump. <laughs> I know it's them because the plot says so. As you can imagine, she saves the kids and Miss Bannister thanks her. Cut to Christmas time. Yeah, nothing really important happens at that time. No reward ceremonies for saving the day. They just ignore it and pretend that didn't happen. But the good news is the movie will be over in 10 minutes. So the townspeople sing a Christmas song, they give her a present, Pippi plays with Tommy and Annika, and much like an American tale, she hears a familiar voice and it turns out it's her father. Captain Longstocking explains what happened. At first, the islanders wanted to eat me. <laughs> Are you really a cannibal king? Aye, but there's no danger now. I converted them to vegetarian cannibals. <laughs> <laughs> you don't look like a king. You look like Pluto from Popeye. The next day, we see Pippi and the crew are saying goodbye to the people. Well, at least she'll be taken care of by her father. We forget that she's just a little girl. Helpless, really. Helpless? Pippi? She is so dull. Pippi looks through the monoscope and sees Tommy and Annika are sad. She tells her father that she wants to stay with the townspeople, and sure enough, she jumps overboard to go back. Maybe next time, Pippi, I'll come back to stay. But whenever you need me, you know how to reach me. Come on, let's go home. So the movie ends, showing all the scenes that we witnessed in the movie, as a reminder of all the fun times we have, and the credits roll with a scary smile for our main character. So that was the new adventures of Pippi Longstocking. The only word I can describe this movie is desperate. Desperate is the best way I can describe this movie. Freedom call. I can see why this movie was a box office failure. This movie tries so hard to make it whimsical and fun, but it fails miserably. The characters are dull and boring with little to no personality, especially the main character. Sometimes the actors can give out a good performance, and other times it just feels forced and obnoxious. The songs are messy and forgettable, it's not allowing the singer to showcase her talents. It's funny because it feels like it came straight from Disney, and most of the time it feels like watching a pilot of a Saturday morning TV show. With no effort at all! I'm not gonna say this is the worst movie, it's just bad. Really, really bad. If you want my recommendation, watch the animated Pippi Longstocking. I'm serious people, this is one of the best animated films I've ever seen. It's bright, colorful, the animation is nice, and the songs are catchy as hell. It's a lot more better than this abomination of monkey feces. My advice to everyone, watch the animated Pippi Longstocking and don't watch this one. Just don't. I'm MC the Movie Critic. I know it and you know it. Take care.